All right, ladies and gentlemen, math is fun. This is the best chapter ever. We're going to talk about normal probability distributions. So today we're going to focus on the graphs of them, and then throughout this chapter we're actually going to get to, to summarize and bring everything together that we've done so far this year. So I'm pretty pumped up if you haven't figured that out. Continuous distribution is what we use. So we're talking about discrete or continuous variables. In this normal distribution, it's a continuous variable, sometimes called the ca the ca Gaussian distribution after Carl Gauss. So how this works, it is basically two things are involved. The mean, which will be the middle, and then standard deviations is what we're also going to use, which we have talked about both of those before, and that's what it does. So this is the normal curve, known as the bell curve from different things. Um, different uh, things that you need to kind of note about, or features. If you look at the next slide, you can kind of talk about it, but it's a smooth line. So I'm kind of going to use this slide. So if you look at both of them, smooth line, symmetric around the mean. The mean is the middle. So it's the very top. That's always going to be your mean. And then we go one, two, and three standard deviations each direction. Whatever the standard deviation is, that's what's going to happen in each direction. And then we have what we call an inflection point. Those of you in calculus, this should kind of ring a bell. But instead of being con or concave, okay, con or up, and it's going to be up, upward cup, up, downward cup, basically what's going to happen. Instead of it going like this, it then becomes down like that. Okay, That's going to always be at one standard deviation away, so you can kind of tell and gauge where that's at. Um, what else do I talk about? As your standard deviation increases, the curve will spread out or get closer to the axis. As it decreases, it, it becomes more peaked. What that means is, It'll become closer to the peak as you get closer and closer to the mean. The farther and more standard deviations you are away, the closer it is to the bottom. This line will never cross your x-axis. You will never get there. Okay? Inflection points is what I was talking about before. They're at one standard deviation on each side. Uh, different things, a nice guided exercise. We'll talk about this in class. If you open to page 294, guided exercise number one goes through four different things that will make something not a normal curve, so we'll kind of talk about that. This is also a guided exercise, guided exercise number three. Both of these curves, we're going to compare contrast, have a mean at six. Does everybody agree with that? So the mean is at six, that's the top of the curve on both of them. What's different is the standard deviation is different for these two. Curve A has a standard deviation of one, one standard deviation away, and it's actually got, the, here's seven and here's five. If you go straight up, that's where it goes from concave up, concave down. So that's kind of the difference there, whereas the other one is spread out. It's spread away from the mean. Standard deviation is 3 away. And if you go 3 away from 6, that would be at 9. So at 9 would be your inflection points. And at 3 would be your inflection points where it goes from con or concave up to concave down. And that's kind of the difference. It's more spread out, so it's going to be shorter. So it's just kind of a compare contrast thing that we can do. Now what are we going to use this normal probability for? The area under any normal curve will always be 1 or 100% of your data is under there. And the portion in a given interval represents the probability that this measurement will lie in the interval. So there's what we call the empirical rule. It's, it's similar to Chebyshev's theorem that we talked about before, but this one actually rules the roost with normal curves. So 68% of your data, maybe I should just move this down so I can talk about it. 68% of your data will mean one standard deviation on each side. So your mean's in the middle. 68% is within one standard deviation of the mean. 95%, these numbers are a lot easier to remember, will be within two standard deviations each way. And then 99.7% of your data will be this or three standard deviations away. So here's a better picture, kind of broken down into each part. Notice that 34% and 34% become that 68%. And then they have 13 and a half and 13 and a half. Well, if you add these four up, it becomes 95%. It's symmetrical. So that's why I can say of the 68%, 34 and 34 on each side. Of 95, you got to divide that by two. And then you notice that there's 47.5% to the left, 47.5% to the right, and that's why it's 13.5%, and then the 
extra is also down here. So that's kind of the idea behind the two. Now that's a general um, estimation. So we, if we want to and it comes out to a nice standard deviation question like this one, we can use the empirical rule. So life of a light bulb, light bulb is normally distributed with a mean of 1100 hours. So if I dry normal curve and I know that 1100 hours is my middle. I will know that the standard deviation is 100 hours. So one standard deviation away each direction. Okay, two standard deviations away, three standard deviations away, and so on. I could go each way and do that would allow me to make kind of your normal curve idea. And I want to know what's the probability, what percentage will be between 1,000 and 1,200 hours. So if you figure it out, okay, that interval means I'm one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right. If I go back to my picture, what percent is one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right? That's 68 percent of my data. You just add them up. So that's one type of question that you might be asked to figure that part out. So here's another one. This is strictly guided exercise from page 297. I tried to pull it out and, and draw this out for you. So suppose that we have a wheat field and it's normally, or the acreage in it is normally distributed with a mean of 35 bushels per acre and a standard deviation of 8 bushels. So what I've done with this picture down here is set it up for you. Notice the mean is 35. Okay, 8, standard deviation of 8 each direction. So 1 to the right, 1 to the left, 2 to the right, 2 to the left, and so on. And I want to find the probability that an acre will yield between 19 and 35. So I'm looking at this area right here. Well, that's between two standard deviations to the left and the mean. Well, what percentage, if you kind of relate to what I shaded in, back to this picture we had a pre couple slides ago, that's this area. So I have 13.5 plus 34, and that's going to be your 47.5%. And that's using the empirical rule to do that. So if you want to go through some of these examples, that's what we're doing. We're trying to gauge it off of this picture. That's a nice picture visual that you can have. And then you basically can you set up your graph, put yourself in the scenario, and then figure out the percentage that they're asking. The last thing in this section is they talk about control charts. This is simply a graph to examine equally spaced intervals over a period of time. And then the variable is what we're going to kind of look at to see if we call it out of control. So we're going to kind of gauge something over a period of time and then see if it's out of control. And there's three different ways we're going to do that. But it's first thing you need to do, you need to know the mean and you need to know the standard deviations. And what you're going to do is create a graph. We'll show you that in a second. The center line is your mean. And then we're going to do these two right here. Add and subtract, not the first standard deviation. We want to know the second and third standard deviations each direction. So here's what your picture should look like always when you start. So let's look at guided exercise number five, which is on page 302. I hope you have it right now. If not, this is going to be kind of a struggle. And I might let you know this before you go. But they go through and they say on day one, the room is 25. And actually before that, we need to know what our mean is. My mean is 19.3. So whatever the mean is, whatever it happens to be, in this case it's 19.3. And that's still working with the symmetrical bell shape. And then the standard deviation is 4.7. So mu 19.3. Standard deviation is 4.7. So what you want to do is we need to add two standard deviations. So what number would two standard deviations be? 2 times 4.7 gets you up to what 9.4 and then you add it to 19.3 which if you look on the thing this is 28.7. Three standard deviations would be 33.4 and then if you subtract two standard deviations this is 9.90 and 5 point two if you subtract three standard deviations. So these become the lines that we're looking at. Okay? And then you will go through a period of time, a scenario. So this is the next 
15 days, you kind of got to read the situation, and they go through and they plot these. So on day one, the number of rooms not made up by 3.30 is 25. So this is listed as the number of rooms that were not made up by the time people can start checking in. So on day one, it was 25. So this is day one. You will then plot a dot at 25, which is about there. Day two is eight. So day two, you go down, where's eight? Just below that. And then you just go in order. And all of us can do this. 23. I'm not going to do them all for time purposes. 24. Okay, 4 is 15. So kind of down here. You kind of get the idea of the, the point that I'm trying to make. And now if you look at this, and we will look at this in class as well as a discussion piece, you then are going to connect your dots. And you're going to kind of have this zigzag effect. All right. What are we looking for by graphing these? This is how you determine if something is out of control. One of these three need to happen in order to kind of look at it more in depth. If one point falls beyond three standard deviations level, either above three standard deviations or below three standard deviations, this is deemed out of control. Why is that the case? If we go back to our empirical rule idea, what percentage of our data falls between three standard deviations each way? We said it was 99.7% of our data falls in the inside, which means you have 0.3% of your data now that is falling outside. 0.3%. That's not very often. That's a rare occurrence. And if that happens, we need to look at it. What happened that day to cause that many rooms to not be ready by 3 o'clock? So if anything falls outside of three standard deviations, Another one is a run of nine consecutive points, so nine consecutive days in which you are above or below the center line, which is just your mean. If you have nine consecutive days that something's not getting done, we have to look at that. That becomes a problem. That should not happen. It shouldn't be more of a zigzag effect, not a common theme. If you get nine consecutive above or below the mean, that's a problem. And then the other one, which is a little more difficult, it says at least two of three consecutive points lie above or below the two standard deviation line, which means two out of three days. Now, if you think about your curve, two standard deviations each way. The percentage in the middle of that is 95%. So you basically have a 5% window of data points, and two of the three showed up in three consecutive days. That is also a problem. We need to kind of look at that. That's rare. It shouldn't happen very often if you have enough data and information. So that's what you look for when you, after you plot your points, is do you get nine consecutive above or below? That's one of them. One above or below three standard deviations, or two out of three in a row. So that'd be looking at like these three points. Would they um, occur at this, or two of three above two, or two of the three below two? Like in this case, there's only one that's a below two. That's okay. That can happen. But two of three is what becomes a problem. So this is the assignment that we're going to look at in class, and we will discuss those more in depth at that time. You guys have a wonderful day.